Hi everybody, it is Monday, July 10th, 2020. Um, please remember, yeah, I'm a psychic, clairvoyant, so everything that's said in the video is entertainment purposes only. Uh, full disclaimers down in the box. If you're interested in getting a reading, uh, shoot me an email, uh, glindathegood17 at gmail, and it's also... But it's just Glinda the Good on uh, Tweet Tweet and uh, T T Social. So those are the other places you can find me. Uh, yeah, it's yeah we did the live on Saturday, so let's just see what goes on. Um, I when I popped in this morning, I realized it's like okay. I must have said something over the weekend that some people don't like. So, uh, yeah, my numbers dropped again. It, it was 322 yesterday, and now it's 319. So, well, you know what? If you can't handle it, get out of the kitchen. Uh, and if you think I'm too bossy, then maybe you're not ready. You're unable to comprehend what I'm saying. So, hey, folks, get a grip. I've seen a lot, a lot that I can't say, but what I can say, I do say on the channel. So, uh, deal with it big time, deal with it. And yeah, uh, it's, I find it very ironic that over the weekends, especially Saturday going into Sunday morning, a lot of stuff is released over different media sources. And uh, it's kind of like, who pays attention to things on like Saturday night, Sunday morning? So a lot of really strange information um, pops up. So, um, okay, let's get going on my stuff. <clears throat> I'll save the certain stuff for later. I did, well, did pop in for a little bit yesterday, so I'll get to her stuff at the end, and um, let's see what's going on. We all know right now it's like, yeah, uh, JoJo went to, flew over the pond on Sunday, but what else is going on that is kind of being hidden? is that Janet Yellen, who's Secretary of the Treasury here in the United States, went over and to, Ch to the Big Red Sea. I mean, talk about not knowing protocol. I mean, the stupid woman bows down three times. Don't, didn't she realize that in a communist country, all signs of monarchy respect went out the window? Come on. I know that when Blinken went over there, he basically gave up Taiwan to the Big Red Sea. And I've been poking around trying to find more details on what uh, Janet gave up uh, trade otherwise, because Secretary of the Treasury, money issues and stuff. Uh, I'm trying to find out what she gave up to the Big Red Sea, and then it was also announced that uh, John Kerry, you know, the idiot with the swift boat stuff, who married the uh, woman who has the Heinz ketchup fortune? Yeah. <clears throat> He's the next one to visit, so, uh, folks, um, I stopped buying Heinz ketchup when he started running, when he announced his run for president, so, um, I stopped buying Heinz products. So, if it can work for uh, the, uh, what is it, the brands, the Belgium company that bought out Anheuser-Busch Bush to be taught a lesson, we can do the same thing to Heinz products. It'll kick, uh, it'll actually hit uh, John Kerry in his personal wallet. Okay, something else that is going on with the Big Red Sea. I know there's sites where the guys are following all sorts of air traffic. Well, we also have to be wa watching the 
water traffic because um, China has sent out a lot of ships, some of them disguised as just basic merchant marine ships, and they're all over the South China Sea. They're like basically around Taiwan. They're in among all the islands, like start going down to like through Singapore, um, Indonesia, Malaysia, down to New Guinea. Basically, they've got all the island chain going from the South Ch Southeast Asian landmass through all the islands down to the continent that's referred to as Down Under. So it's not good. Something they're getting ready to royal, really start some stuff. And part of it is because um, close to many of the shores, there's like a whole band of area that is filled with oil and natural gas. So yeah, they want that stuff so they don't have to get it from anybody else. Okay, now, um, <clears throat> as I went on and went through stuff, um, the Prime Minister of the Netherlands has gone bye-bye. And they're saying that the government basically collapsed over immigration rules and regs. Um, I mean, there's a difference of the policies. So that's kind of uh, interesting. I mean, in the Netherlands, they're starting to uh, a lot more anti-immigration political factors are happening. It's more conservative right wing. Oh gosh, I hear something clicking. So hold on one moment, please. Okay, I'm back. Just my neighbor saw a piece of mail had been delivered to me and it was too big for my box. Uh, so what was it? Uh, the Netherlands. Yeah. Uh, basically a government switch over to more, um, right leaning conservative ways of thinking, which, Hey, that's a good deal. Now, um, we all know that I listened to my favorite Swede and, uh, it's, it's kind of funny because, uh, yeah, like I said with boycotts, it's like if Carrie's going over to the Big Red Sea, the Swede said, hey, you got to do what you, what everybody did with, like, Bud Light because of Dylan Mudbright. And, uh, oh, yeah, Anheuser-Busch. They are basically now tossing out all sorts of word salad just to possibly bring back sales, but it's it's not good. It's just like the Miss Universe pageant. A lot of those women are going to be, I hope, I hope. Now, back in the day, yes, I belong to the Miss America scholarship pageant title holder sorority. which has nothing to do with Miss Universe. Miss Universe is a pay-to-play cash pageant. Miss America, no, you don't have to pay to compete, <clears throat> pay, a, pay any real fee, any fees, and you win scholarship money. Uh, Miss USA and Miss Universe, yeah, you have to kick in a lot of cash to compete, okay? turns out that um, the uh, person who won Miss Netherlands is a tranny, is a transvestite. And so that guy is going to go compete for Miss Universe. In my personal opinion, if the Miss Universe pageant allows a guy to compete... I think every other woman who has a title, Miss USA, Miss Canada, Miss Mexico, Miss France, Germany, UK, Belgium, Italy, Spain, 
everybody needs to withdraw. If you have no women competing, how can there be a pageant with just one person? So worldwide female boycott of the next Miss Universe pageant. I hope my word gets out and a lot of women agree with me and have it happen. It's, it's just crazy. Totally crazy. These trans, these transvestite men, they are so insecure. They can't compete in the world with men of their own sex that they have to come and compete against women. You guys, don't you realize that, hey, God made, God made man first, basically for practice. That's why when he realized he messed up and that's why woman was created. Yeah. Oh, but hopefully it's like they're now finding out that like the Gen Xers and the millennials, they're getting fed up, especially with all this Gen Z nonsense floating around the world politically. And um, they're now switching sides, the Gen Xers and millennials. They're now going from donkey to elephant because now they have kids and they see all this tranny shit and they don't want that to happen to their children. So Gen Z's, pretty soon you're going to be really, really, really. It's like everyone is going to be against you unless you straighten up your act. Now, um, I, I did see on the international news, yeah, it's since mom's side is Austro-Hungarian, and I'm, I'm always watching what's going on over there. And, um, yeah, Viktor Orban basically is not letting the EU control him or control the country of Hungary. Yeah, um, so now to punish them for not being good little Mm, socialists, Marxist, communists. They're trying to pull money away from Hungary. They're trying, the EU is <clears throat> not going to be sending money, is trying not to send money to Hungary that they use the EU money just for public transportation purposes. For like the commuter rail lines, the buses, the metro trams, yeah, because uh, the EU wants everybody stuck in their own little 15-minute world. And because Viktor Orban basically says, uh-uh, I'm not playing your stupid games, they're going to try and cut off the cash flow that allows people to travel outside of their own little neighborhood. So, uh, yeah. Victor Orban, hey, he's he's one of the good, really strong good guys. Yes, and it's just like someone that you don't realize is Bobby Jr. I mean, he is actually coming out and calling out the the standard media for its yellow journalism. I mean, he's saying that Operation Mockingbird, which is basically yellow journalism fed to all propaganda that was fed to the media by a three-letter agency. He said, they, even though the agency said they stopped doing it, Bobby Jr. is saying, hey, folks, it's still in operation. So <clears throat> keep from there. And, of course, a lot of it has to deal with the Big Red Sea. Because the Big Red Sea is now basically bullying everybody because, yeah, they want to take over all the access to the natural gas and oil going down from the main continent all the way down to the continent down under. So to intimidate the people from down under, what they've now put out is that if somebody who speaks icky against the Big Red Sea 
travels to any of the 50 odd countries that have extradition agreements with the Big Red Sea. Basically, those people are going to be stopped at passport control, arrested by the Big Red Sea, and extradited straight to the Big Red Sea. And once they disappear into the Big Red Sea, the odds of being seen and heard again in the free world? I think you got to go back and watch that old Richard Geard movie. Yeah. Yeah. He did a movie back in the 90s. So, yeah. The Big Red Sea wants to start arresting people who talk against them. So, I'm like, I looked at the list of countries and I'm like, jeez. If I want to travel, I have to be careful now because, of course, <clears throat> I'm calling out the Big Red Sea and they're nonsense. And they're really going after the Aussies. So people, you got to really watch what's happening. Especially if you're traveling. If you are on social media, you do speak out against certain things. The Big Red Sea probably has you on a watch list to be arrested. Wouldn't surprise me. Speaking of arrests, little Greta. Yeah, people are, like, watching at her going, yeah, she keeps get ar getting arrested and then released. When in heck is she going to finally be formally charged and tossed in the pokey? Or is she one of those people that they're going to let do anything and everything until the world explodes? Well, let's put it this way. If little Greta does something stupid here in the States... Or anywhere that I can see. Maybe people should start putting uh, civil cases against her for aggravation. Okay? Now, um, something that I saw that is funny. Um, it was just a brief clip. And especially since they're going to have the NATO summit in a couple of days. Yeah. Um, Latvia made the big announcement that they have their first openly gay president. Well, dudes, we've been having gay monarchs presidents for centuries. In fact, <clears throat> uh, the first king of the United Kingdom, I mean Scotland and England together, was James. James VI of Scotland, and he was known as James I of England. James was bi, if not gay. I mean, yeah, he did get it up a couple times with his wife to produce a few kids. But he preferred, uh, after he did his kingly duty to provide the heir and spares, <clears throat> he's stayed with his male partner. He may have been married, but that was all for all for show. He was gay. And that's why they have the King James Version of the Bible that was rewritten to suit his needs. Okay? So now we've got JoJo over in the UK, and the big joke is Charles, don't stand next to him because the guy passes gas and it's loud and stinky. Well, yeah, it's Jojo when he goes to the NATO thing after he's it's like, yeah, he's got the meeting with Charles. And I bet it's going to be very, very short. Because the last time an American president, Donald went over. He had a meeting with Charles when he was still Prince of Wales. Now, the meeting was supposed to... Donald and Chuck were supposed to only talk for 15 minutes. They ended up talking for, like, almost two hours. So let's see how long JoJo has a conversation with Chuck. I bet Chuck is going to be making noise to uh, get him out ASAP. But first, uh, but first, they had to show JoJo going over and hanging with Rishi over at Downing Street. 
I was surprised that Jojo was able to walk from the car to the front door at Downing Street without getting lost. But yeah, they're, um, they're, they were probably conspiring to make sure that the UK guy, Ben Wallace, would not be placed head of NATO. I think Rishi is quietly supporting that uh, van der Leyen woman who is basically a protege of the Adolf crew, Adolf uh, followers. Yeah, not good, not good at all. I mean, it's going to be interesting. I mean, it's, it's going to be, um, it, it, a lot of stuff is going to be hitting the fan. Now for, um, what's going on with Charles and the rest of the crew. Now, um, Saturday, um, I was doing my quiet time and I was wondering, okay, what the heck's going on? And I, I kind of just said, Hey Wallace, you know anything? And she just, she just popped in and said, Hey, Rachel's regretting because she signed certain documents. So Rachel signs paperwork contracts. Or was it a prenup? The documents Rachel signed is now coming back to bite her in the butt. And I'm curious, what in heck is it? We know that the contracts she's not living up to to produce media. She, she's not a producer. She, what, studied theater and international international studies in college. So she was always Miss Pris in front of the camera. That's what she wanted to be. She didn't learn that for every one person in front of the camera, there's a hundred people behind it making it happen. From like the lowly PA who's like 1920, standing on a corner making sure people don't walk into the set, to the gals in the offices processing payroll, there's a lot of stuff. Some people think producers, oh, all, all they do is stand back. Well, production people, there's a lot of work involved. And when she signed the, well, when they signed those contracts with the different media, streaming media distribution things, like, you know, that thing that started by sending out DVDs, and the thing that started with, um, so you could download talk shows on your little listening device. <clears throat> she doesn't realize, she never learned how much work actually goes in. She never appreciated how much work her daddy really did. All she did was like, dad, I need more cash. She didn't realize how much work he actually did. And then she thought she could just sit back and be, oh, um, um, uh, I'm the Duchess of Sussex, so you do what I say and you make, somebody else has to make me look good. No, when you sign on to be a producer, you're doing everything, not just your 15 minutes in front of the camera. So that's, that's not going to be good. And it's also going to be really bad because um, stuff is coming out. Especially she goes, oh, I was up for, I want an Emmy or I'm going to be nominated for an Emmy or this or that. Well, these distribution companies are now finding out that she's just blowing nothing but smoke. And it's not just the smoke that's coming out of Henry. I mean, Henry's in talks with different people to sell the movie rights to his autobiography. Um, I can't say it's autobiography. I think it's a piece of fiction. So, yeah, there's supposedly negotiations for the movie rights for Henry Mountbatten Windsor's um, 
work of fiction. That's how I'm going to put it. Um, or there's also more and more stuff coming out because when, yet when Charles and Camilla went up to Scotland to, for like the event, which is basically a low key coronation. So he accepted the crown. So to be king of the Scots, um, everybody noticed how swollen his fingers are. So they're all saying, yeah, it's like he probably has edema or something like that. I don't know. But he is in the 70s, so we do have to watch because Charles does is dealing with some health issues. So, um, could be interesting. I mean, maybe because he does have health issues that people have known about for the past few years, especially his mom before she passed away. Maybe that's why in the letter of guidance suggestions that KC3 received, because we know everything to avoid paying taxes, the whole kit and caboodle stuff is transferred from one monarch to the next monarch, so there's no um, death, death duties. But there was a letter of guidance given to Charles. So now after Charles got all the whole kit and caboodle, his mom gave him a list of, how, of things how she would like. She's suggesting to him to be distributed. Yeah. Um, uh, Duchess Sophie, she did receive a nice little nest egg for the bank for when because she probably will outlive Edward. Women normally do. And so they say, oh, she left Sophie so much money, but you have to realize that was a way to take care of her grandchildren, James and Louise. So yeah, that money was supposed, they reportedly, allegedly, the queen made sure that Sophie got like 500,000 pounds. So, which means that the money was then set up in two trusts for the grandchildren, each of 250,000 pounds. So, they were put into trust. That money was put into trust for her grandchildren. Hey, to get 250,000 pounds from your gram? That's nothing to sneeze at. And the way that the royals do their investments, they are, they know how to make money off of money. Okay. So the other thing that I, yeah, I do want to let people know that, um, yeah, Catherine, Queen knew she was passing. She knew she was, it was her last summer. So, yes, um, Catherine and William did take the kids up to see Granny uh, for during the summer for the last time while she was still able to move around some. Well, during that period of time, that's when Huey, too, went through her jewelry box. Since Huey, too, knew that Camilla would only be queen for maybe, what, 10 years max? She got some stuff. But other personal pieces, like that gorgeous necklace that QE2 got as a wedding gift that's personal property it's already been entrusted to Catherine so QE2 did break up her personal jewelry collection a lot went to Catherine which in time it'll be passed down for Charlotte to use and little and George's wife will have it Certain pieces went to her daughter, Anne, the Princess Royal, and to Zara. So it was pieces that both Anne and Zara both loved, and they received those. Sophie received certain pieces that would be for her to go then to James's future wife and Lady Louise. 
Yes, and believe it or not, Andy, there were some pieces of jewelry, especially that tiara. Because technically, when he divorced from Sarah, the tiara that she always wore went back into Elizabeth's possession. Well, now you can see that the tiara went back to Andrew, and we saw Beatrice wear it when she attended the wedding of the Crown Prince of Jordan. So Princess Beatrice did receive the York tiara from Grandma. And I'm pretty sure that Eugenie was given her wedding tiara. Okay? Beatrice waited. She couldn't have the big wedding like her sister did. Thanks to the illegal lockdown of the world. So her grandmother made sure she had a tiara to wear forever. The York tiara, since she is the Princess of York. And she's also married into the Italian royal family. When Eduardo's elders pass, Eduardo will be part of the, he's an Italian count, which is pretty high down there in Italy because they've got this quasi political monarchy. So um, Elizabeth made sure that a piece of English jewelry heritage would be worn when Princess Beatrice, Countess Mapelli Mazzi, and of something something, she would be wearing her British jewelry when she attends official Italian functions. Okay, so that's something people don't realize. As for Andrew, yes, he. he there was stuff in the letter about Andy, okay? Charles is not going to boot him out of Royal Lodge. And his Huey 2 made sure that Andrew was taken care of. KC3 was written, the, written basically read the riot act he goes your brother needs the protection he did stuff like a la james bond to find out about the miami guy so your brother needs to stay at royal lodge which has better security and because you're going to be busy and to conserve energy because Andy's a good 10 years younger than Charles. No, Charles was born in, what, 47? Andy was born, what, I think, like, 60, 60 or 61. Because he and I are, like, around really close in age. We were laughing as kids. Oh, well, you're, yeah, for a short couple of months, it's like he and I are the same age. Um... Yeah, Andrew basically is taking over the management of, like, Windsor Great Park, just like his father did. People who would go into the park and go to the different, like, I guess it's the farm store, to go pick up products that are produced. Some people didn't realize it, but that old dude at the register, or helping them get products or stocking products on the shelves... That was actually Prince Philip. So, Andrew is going to take over running the households and the estates for Charles. Because that's what Prince Philip did. Philip ran the, the home side of the business. Elizabeth was political and governmental. Prince Philip 
actually took over running the interior workings of, okay, what's going on here with the buckhouse? Why is all this money being spent on this nonsense? No, you're not going to have this thing going on over, well, it's always been there for like the past 200 years, he goes. No, you're not going to have a separate dining room for a guy who's been dead for 180 years, okay? I mean, there were really quirky things that Prince William, Prince Philip really cleaned up. And he had a really great brain for business because he actually, the, now Charles is getting his cash from the Duchy of what, Lancaster? Actually, it was Philip running that gig. And so all of Philip's duties are now dumped onto Andrew. So Andrew is basically, he's running the show. He's run, he's behind the scenes taking care of everything that needs to be done, managed in the Windsor Great Park, which is, yeah, it has his house, Royal Lodge. Uh, Ed and Sophie have their house in there. William and Catherine have their house in there. And so he's overseeing, hey, what's going on at Kensington Palace with all the expenditures to make sure he's, he's the businessman. He's now taken over as business manager for the royal family. So that's what Andy's doing. And then he also has to check on everything up in Sandringham, up in Norfolk, and then way up in Balmoral because Charles, he likes his little house. He doesn't want to stay in the castle. And from what I've heard, that castle's like, it's ice cold. I mean, okay, yeah. Okay, Prince Andrew and Albert of Saxe-Gotha, Coburg. He liked the windows open all the time. So that building, you literally, in the middle of summer, you're freezing your butt off. You better bring thermal underwear if you're staying up there. It is cold. And yeah, they do give people water bottles, hot water bottles or electric blankets if you're staying at Balmoral in the summer. So Charles wants to stay at his little house that he's that had belonged to the Queen Mom and use the castle to park everybody else, all the extended family. And yeah, Charles wants to get Balmoral open more and more for tourists. So Andy's going to be pretty busy. Right now he's busy taking care of Sarah. And uh, those two, okay, Legally, they're divorced, but they're still married within the eyes of the church, and so obviously they are taking the vows they made before God seriously, in sickness and in health. Who do you think is there? Who do you think was in the waiting room when Sarah was in surgery? Yeah, maybe her daughters, but with her daughters, their dad. Actually her, which in her heart is still her husband. So, um, we, um, uh, I hope Sarah has, is recovering well, comfortable. Yeah, I can tell her right now from experience, you're not going to be able to do, pull your head, he, arms up over your head to do your hair. So make sure that, uh, a, B, huge, teach your dad how to brush hair and put hair in a ponytail because mom is not going to be able to do it for at least three to six months. It'll just be too darn painful. So girls, teach your dad how to help your dad, your mom get dressed. Okay. So that's pretty much what I've got for you today. Um, I hope everyone has a good Monday. I will have another pre-recorded video up on Wednesday, the 12th, and hopefully I might have some, we'll see what's going on with the Screen Actors Guild. I have heard some stuff. I, I, I do have some things. Um, yeah, I talked to a lot of people film yesterday and 
they, yeah, it's like the last time people were out, were out on strike, they, they were out for like over six months. Well, this time people don't have the same kind of nest egg that they hid for the last big strike because people got wiped out during the illegal sequester. So these strikes, walkouts may end up sooner and um, than expected because people are going to be losing their houses. People don't have the money to stay out like they did before. So, yeah, everybody, I hope I'll have something for you on Wednesday. It'll go up 4.30 Central Standard Time. Uh, yeah, remember, it's even days of the month in July, 4.30 and second and fourth Saturdays of the month, 1 p.m. Central Standard Time is when I do a live broadcast. Uh, and um, in talks with somebody else that some of you have watched to um, possibly do. Um, it's one of the card readers. And it's funny because I'll watch her video and then, oh my God, all this information starts just flooding my brain and it was it was like oh my gosh so I went back and I was stopping starting her video while typing her an email saying hey you're doing this well this is what came in in this whole scenario <clears throat> that should she and I do a live broadcast we'll talk about I don't want to give that information out right now but I did send it or send it to her in an email, so it's time and date stamped. And um, but it does have some stuff about people being reincarnated. Yeah, and there's there's people that um, past monarchs do come back as current members of the royal family, and. Um, yeah, you kind of, I'm getting when you, in reincarnation, when you come back in past lives, you, for me, I know my, I'm on my last life. So I know that I am here to tie up all sorts of loose ends with people. <clears throat> and I basically stay an independent female independent woman because um, I don't need to be permanently tied to someone so because there's too many people I have to tie up the loose ends with so uh, sorry guys nobody's gonna I mean I've got some very good friends that I've maintained friendships with for since childhood so we're going in the 30, 40 year mark. Yeah. Some guy, some of these men I've known since single digits. And we're still good friends. Yeah, their wives are kind of like, oh my god, you're gonna go hang out with her. I mean, I, some of the some of their wives are just like, oh my gosh, they're so jealous, paranoid of me, and I just kind of laugh my ass off. I'm like, hey, woman, you're the one he married. I'm just his old friend from ki from when we were swamp rats in a certain U.S. state that has swamps. <laughs> hey, we used to flick caterpillars at each other. I mean, if something was going to happen, it would have happened when 40 odd years ago, but it hasn't. So, some of these women get a grip. Get a freaking grip. Okay, it's I've gone on and rambled for a, too, long, too long of a time. I will be chatting with you on Wednesday. Everyone have a good Monday and Tuesday. Bye-bye.